All right, so we spent the last two weeks studying different aspects of marriage. What have we covered so far? We covered divorce, and then that was last week. And then should every Christian get married or is singleness a thing, a valid, good option? I think, yeah, 31. That is false. Today, connected to marriage, where our question, I apologize, question number 31 is... Does the Bible approve of polygamy? What? You don't have to give me what I'm Polygamy. We will define Who knows words. Latin? I'm looking at you, Andrew. I have this like three times <laughs> today, so. Hey, you too, Micah. You're in uh, that school. What does poly mean? Many. Many. Yes. Megami. And oh, what does gammy. gammy mean? Spouse. <laughs> have you ever heard of monogamy? What does mono mean? Oh, one. Yeah. So mono means one, monogamy. Oh, I just gave you a whole question we should do. Wait. And gammy, I guess, means marriage? <laughs> You're guessing? You're just like, I, I have messed up. That, well, monogamy and polygamy, polygamy. So polygamy, the practice or custom of having more than one wife or husband at the okay. same time more than one spouse okay so this question is interesting because is this legal today to have an extra wife or an extra husband in america no no it is not legal it is illegal utah is interesting so there is a branch of a very far out branch of Christianity called Mormonism. They're not a branch. They're a, they believe, they're a false, the, um, they're, a, they're a Christian cult. That's what they yeah, are. Yeah, they would and be a cult, cult. but they're pretty established. So the original version of Mormonism, the original teachings of Mormonism, is not just a se separate branch off of Mormonism. It is the original roots of Mormonism. It really has a high esteem, uh, multiple wives, polygamy. polygamy. Um, they, a lot of their beliefs do have to do with like, in the future, you can become God of your own planet and you need to have lots of wives so you can fill that, that world with Marriage spirit babies. So it's, it is originally, it was pretty important. Now, in order for Utah to become a state, so many Mormons moved to Utah and, and settled Utah that in order for them to be accepted into the union of the, of, as um, a state, they had to denounce polygamy. Now, there have been, in certain places, groups of people who have continued to practice polygamy. They kind of hide it with, like, you have one official marriage, and then you just have other ones are just, like, uh, not state-approved marriages, but, like, they still have a ceremony, and you're married to them, but not officially as to the government. And they call them like, well, there's a TV Sister show now, Sister Wives. Yeah. Anyway, so it's still kind of practiced today. This actually did just come up. I was researching it two years ago in the Utah legislature that they, they're trying to re-allow it again. Anyway, it's still a current issue. There are countries in the world where it's allowed, India, Saudi Arabia, um, where it is legal. Um, so it's still a current issue, and it is even an issue within the Christian large umbrella right um there's a reason for this there are quite a few people in the bible that had multiple wives okay can you name some people in the bible that had multiple wives andrew jacob how many wives did jacob have kind of two plus two right like same with abraham like they had handmaidens who would also sometimes function as their wives, but not officially. It's kind of gross and dumb. But um, yes, Jacob. Um, so that's an interesting thing. Like Jacob's really important. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the fathers of the Hebrew nation, the Israelites. Actually, in fact, Jacob's name got changed to Israel. And he really is an important father because he has 12 sons. How many tri tribes are in Israel? 12. And they're all named after his 12 sons, right? So and that and some of those sons are from his multiple wives and some of those sons are from his uh wives handmaidens so 
if God is legitimizing the all the twelve tribes and the twelve sons, is He legitimizing polygamy? Is He approving of polygamy? That's kind of our question, right? You, that that's our question exactly. Like, is is He is He accepting or approving? Are those different? Um, or allowing? Or allowing versus approving, right? Um, so we're gonna look at verses that deal with this. Um, anyone else you can think of in the Bible had multiple wives? Hannah's husband, yes, yes, she, he, you're right. He had Hannah as a wife and another wife, and the other wife was having babies, and she wasn't. And she prayed to God, and God gave her Eli, Eli right? No, Samuel. Samuel. Two Eli. Yeah. Right, yes. and then she gave him to serve under Eli in the temple. Cool. What well, girls? What are we reading at, at home? Who was the king that we just? Henry. Finished? Yes, what was his name? Solomon. Solomon, David's son Solomon, who was a child of a man who had multiple wives. A child of um, the, um, his mother was actually taken from her husband to be a like fourth or fifth wife to King David. Um, Bathsheba was Solomon's mother. And David had multiple wives. All the kings, right? Kings had multiple, multiple wives. It's interesting because when when you read the Bible about how the kings came to be, like it was the Israelites really wanting to be like their neighbors. Yeah, the neighbors had the kings. And that's what the kings did all the time, right? They had many, many wives. Solomon took this to an insane extreme with like 600 wives and 300 concubines, which were like, like wives without being official wives. It's terrible. So, um, yeah, lots of polygamy in the Bible. So... Because it's in the Bible, does that mean God says it's okay? No. <laughs> There's lots of terrible stuff in the Bible. It's and just because it's in the Bible, and just because Bible characters did these things, doesn't mean it's like a model and example for us. There's plenty of bad examples in the Bible. There's only one perfect example in the Bible. Who is that? Thank you. So a lot of times you're like, well, this Bible character did it, or it, it's in the Bible, so it's okay. Like, no, that's not how the Bible's written. The Bible, the Bible is a historical book. If the Bible was a movie, you, I wouldn't let you watch it. There's so much terrible stuff in it. We wouldn't be allowed to show the Bible movie in youth group if it was, like, exactly as the Bible's written. There's terrible, terrible things in, in the movie. It would be rated R or worse, maybe rated X. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, X. Really? Um, or no, uh, well, actually in the theater, NC-17, do they still, isn't that a, still a thing? No no child under 17. So technically rated R movies you can go to with a parent. Yeah. But, yeah. You have to be 17 to go to them. But they're, I don't know if they make the I mean, NC-17 movies anymore, but no child under 17. Well, it doesn't matter if your parents there or not. Was like the Joker was R. There was one that. I don't know. I don't know. So sometimes there'll be unrated versions that are like Wait, even. Gideon had multiple wives. Gideon had multiple wives. It says Gideon had multiple wives. Um, yeah. So lots of Bible characters had multiple wives. So. Boy hiding from his wife. Um, here's another challenge, possible challenge. It seems like the OT law, Old Testament law, required it in circumstances. We're gonna hit a verse here that I tells you that if your brother's wife. If, you're, if your brother dies, you need to take on his wife to take care of her. We've got to touch on that verse, I think. So is that requiring you to have multiple wives? Um, no, challenge yeah, number three, it's her. illegal today. So, well, if the Bible says it's okay and it's illegal today, what do we do with that? Um, Christian cults have promoted in America. That's a challenge. What about concubines um, and all the Bible characters? So let's look at what the Bible says. This is how, where we'll dig in next. We define our terms. Talk about the challenges. Here are some verses that deal with this topic. Um, you can pick one and read it, and um, we will talk about what the Bible says. Who would like to grab the first one? Exodus 21.10. Trevor. The next one is Deuteronomy 25.5. Addison. The next one is three verses. 2 Chronicles 24.1-3. Ellie. Uh, the next one is Second Samuel twelve eight. Caitlin. 
Two more. Deuteronomy 17.17. 17. Maya? And the last one, 1 Timothy 3.2. Anybody want to grab it? I'll do it. Okay, so we got a lot of Old Testament verses because this was more, like we talked about a little bit, definitely more prevalent in the Old Testament. Um, trying to think of, I never thought of this. Is there anyone in the New Testament with multiple wives that we know of? I'm sure like, like King Herod and some of those people had. Huh. King Herod takes his brother's wife, right? There's something weird. Anyway, um, definitely, you know, but more commonplace in the New Testament, Old Testament. Who Does anyone know who the first person to have more than one wife was? Yes. How do you know that? Yeah, good job. Lamech. Who's Lamech? I have no clue. Cain's son. So three generations into humanity and someone already had two wives. Interesting. Is it Cain's son? Wait, Is that right? That would make yeah. some cousins, though. He had two cousins. Yes. Wives. Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, cool. All right, let's dig in. Who had Exodus 21? You didn't write the names. Yeah, Mom. Yeah. Trevor had it. Go for it, Trevor. Okay, so this is an Old Testament law. If he marries another woman, he must not deprive the first one of food or her marital rights or clothing. He has to take care of her. So if the Bible has a law about if you have multiple wives, isn't the Bible saying it's okay? It's approving multiple wives. It's not saying no. It's not saying no. That is, that is correct. The Old Testament law does not say no, you're not allowed or you'll have these consequences to polygamy. It has a law about, the, you know, this law about you can't like ignore your first wife when you get a second wife. So is this approving of polygamy? Not really. Why not really? So he's not saying you should do it. It's saying if you do it. Make sure you don't neglect your first wife. So I think you guys are on the right track with your thoughts. Like this isn't necessarily like everybody go have multiple wives. It's the best thing ever. It's like this is this was a thing that was happening already. And Moses was writing laws from God and to protect and to take care of um, this situation, which, you know, could be pretty common. You know, like you have a wife like, ah, I'm tired of her. I'm going to get a new one. And then you neglect your first wife. This law is saying, don't neglect your first wife. Take care of her too, right? And so it's more like working for the best in a not so great situation. And so this law is trying to protect um, women who are in polygamous marriages. Um, there also, I mean, I didn't get into it, but there's also, this isn't always just one way. Like there's not, mostly in the Bible, it's, one man and multiple wives, but there's another term. Well, polygamy is either way, and then there's specific terms for a wife with multiple husbands, or, but anyway, but most of that we're gonna see is a man with multiple wives. In fact, I don't know of anyone in the Bible with multiple husbands, but it's possible. Actually, there's a lady in the New Testament. You've had five wives. You've had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. But maybe she just got divorced a lot. And there's like, they, they try to check Jesus with a question like, but those are like death, not not, not concurrent, I think. Like a, a, ma a woman who had a husband and then he died and another husband and he died and another one and he died. Who is she married to in heaven? They try to check Jesus with that question. Yeah. I should ask Mormons that because when you get, like, when they're married, Mormons would say they're married to all of them because multiple wives are okay. Yeah, but like in, in heaven, like, that's why marriage and kids are so important is because that gets you into heaven. And then families in marriage are forever in heaven. And so, like, when you marry, like, so, like, they would, they would, mainstream Mormonism now, though, doesn't really oh. plug me. It's 
that the one, the main, the Mormonism that does delineate the sect that broke off, who wanted to go back to what um, their, their Joseph, Joseph Smith. Smith did. And so mainstream Mormonism did that anymore. So you're saying that would be a good question for well, mainstream? Okay, I think we're on the right track with just because there's a law that deals with polygamy to try to work for the best in a polygamous relationship doesn't mean the Bible is necessarily approving of it. But it's a little bit gray. Yeah, Henry. Um, I'll trade you two of these for one. No, that is awful and no. Even even in polygamy, I would hope that like you still would have the vows of till death do us part, like those would still be binding even if polygamy is allowed. So no, it's not just trading wives. But, like, but that's like like concubines and stuff, like that's looser, right? There's no covenant vow with a concubine. So it's Start to be crude, but it's just a sex slave, basically, and it's the worst. It's even worse than polygamy. Yeah. Because they're not like, they don't have the title and the commitment. And, right, there's not love. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, Deuteronomy 25 5. Who had that? Addy. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside of his family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in to sue her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of the husband's brother to her. Okay, so there is a law. So this is a law about if your brother dies, you have to take his wife as your own to take care of her and give her children. If you're a man, if you're a guy, you take your brother's wife. Right. So is this law promoting polygamy? What if you're married and your brother dies? Do you have to take on his wife to take care of her? And then then that would would this be a law that God is promoting polygamy? What do you think, Micah? What if you kill your brother? Uh, that's a bad idea. Or what if you what if you like if it's not then you would have to divorce your wife and divorce your wife and to marry. So uh, this one confused me for a bit because this one feels like well you got to take your brother's wife. But there's a, it's a phrase in here, that the first, what's the first little um, statement in here? What's the first little se sentence? Addie, what's the first little sentence? Well, the first thing, the sent it's, this verse starts together. out with something. Um, if brothers dwell together. One if brothers one. dwell together. If they live. If brothers dwell together, here's what I read about this. If brothers are dwelling together, that brother, the other brother isn't married. Because he would have his own dwelling. So literally, this is a qualifier that that means the brother that is marrying his brother's wife is single. So this is not promoting polygamy because this is, if the brothers live together, th this is how it would work. This is how it explained to me. Like it doesn't just, but if they're cohabitating, it means that he doesn't have his own wife. So he's not already married. So it is a, it's his duty on the brother to keep that, to provide for Because basically, you know, without welfare, without protection, like, this this woman, a widow, it's a really desperate situation where it's not as anymore. Like back then, you know, women couldn't work a job and provide for themselves near as easily as they can today. So you, when when a husband dies, they often leave that wife is left uncared for. So this was a provision to help care for her, and it was a like family duty. But it wasn't requiring someone who's already married to marry his brother's wife. It was only requiring a single brother to marry his brother's wife. What? What if all the brothers were married? Um, there's other provisions about how to care for widows in the Old Testament law, but this one came first. This was like the best option for a widow. If there's an unmarried brother, he needs to take her and care for her and make her his wife. And so the marriage bow vows are, are ended by death, right? Till death do us part. And then it would be a remarriage, but it's, it's a lawful instruction to marry your brother's widow, right? This is um, brought out when you talk about... Um, Ruth? Ruth, yeah. yeah. So Ruth and her two sons, they all moved to Moab, and then the sons marry Moabite women. And then the, husband, the sons die, and Ruth's own husband dies. Now there's this woman with her two daughter-in-laws, 
And she says, don't stay with me. Am I going to bear another son for you? And you're going to wait for him to grow up? And you're going to marry this son I'm going to have in 20 years? Yeah. Like, no, go off. So, so she was... Um, she was referring to this law. That there was this law that they should marry a brother, but there was no brothers left. Right. Um, there's other stories in the Bible where um, literally... Who is it? It's it, it's it's Judah, right? And Tamar? Tamar. Literally, Judah's oldest son is married to Tamar. I'm, I should have looked this up. I'm just thinking of it now. I think this is the right story. And he dies, and then she marries his younger brother, and he dies. Oh, yeah. And then there's the next brother, and Judah's like, no, you can't marry any more of my sons. They keep dying when they get married to you. Something's going on. And so he holds the marriage back. And so Tamar is destitute and in, in bad situations, not provided for. So she's, you know, out on, on the street, basically. And um, this whole situation is created because Judah would not let him, let her marry his third son. So this law was and being what did ignored. Do? I, I didn't want to get into this, but yes. Yes, yes. Yes, she does. Yes, PG-13. This is R-rated. This is why the Bible is rated R. Her father-in-law. He, she tricks him into this, yes. Because she's been uh, cast aside. Um, so, and then it continues with Ruth, right? Like, this is the whole, like, a kinsman redeemer. Ruth marries Boaz because she is, he is her kinsman redeemer. A relative who's unmarried that um that needs to marry ruth and provide for her that is how the system was set up we don't have that anymore it's today it's easier for women to be provided for when they're single and there's no laws in our country this is like remember we talked about old testament laws this was a civil law right for caring for widows that doesn't exist anymore okay um but it still didn't require polygamy and a lot of people use this verse to say it requires polygamy anyway Second Chronicles 24, 1 to 3. Ellie had this, right? Yeah. This one's kind of interesting. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned for four years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia. She was from Beersheba. Throughout the time of the priest Jehovia, Joash did what was right in the Lord's sight. He acquired two wives to him, and he was the father of sons and daughters. I included this because Joash was a young boy king, seven years old, I don't know when he got these wives, but it was a priest, Jehoiada, that brought him, that got him two wives. So you have a priest of God getting the king two wives. So is that a biblical endorsement of polygamy? Kind of looks like one. Kind of looks like one. Now, did it, is this a command of God? That's what I would ask next. Or did the priest just do this because he thought the king should have two wives? <laughs> I think the priest just did it. Now, Jehoiada is not a, he's actually a good guy, and, and Joash um, is a good king. But once again, we see good people with polygamous relationships. And, I mean, it's not necessarily God's design or God's plan. But it's an interesting challenge because it's a priest who did it this time. But are priests perfect? No. Any other thoughts on that one? So this one could be challenging if someone, you know, when we get, uh, hopefully we get to like to be able to talk, how you talk to a friend about this. This is something that is pretty relevant because when we affirm um, to a to a heavy level, like to a strong point, that marriage is between one man and one woman, as the Bible teaches us, this could be a chink in the armor if you don't understand this fully, right? Like, if you tell someone, you know, talking about homosexuality or something else, the Bible says marriage is between a man and a woman. And then they could say, well, what about polygamy? There's plenty of people in the Bible that had multiple wives. Like, how can you say marriage between one man and one woman? Look at David. Look at Jehoiada. Look, a priest did it. Look at Gideon. Look at um, Abraham. Like, all these people, right? And so this is why this is important. You know, you might think, oh, it's just old traditions. But no, if we are to stand firm on the Bible says marriage is between one man and one woman, wait a second, what about polygamy? So this is why this is important. Um, 2 Samuel 12, 8, this one deals with David and an interesting statement from God, okay? That, that is messy here, a little bit messy. 
Samuel, who had it? I did. Caitlin, read it for us. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this was too little, I would add to you as much more. So this is God speaking to David and saying, in the time of when he sinned against uh God, well, he sinned and took Bathsheba as his wife and killed Uriah, her husband. Remember that craziness? This is what God is saying, like, I have given you everything. I've even given, I've given your master's house. So Saul, the king before, I've given you his house. I've given you his wives. So did God give David multiple wives? Yeah. It sounds like it, right? If you study this, was David married to any of Saul's wives? No, actually. This is what's interesting. So this is not literal. David actually didn't take any of Saul's wives. Now, it would have been his right. This is how the king, kings always worked. If you conquered a king, you could take his wives, right? He might have a whole harem of women. Now, it's not recorded that David took any of Saul's wives. He did have multiple wives, but it's not recorded. So... It's, this is a weird one because God is saying, I gave you your master's house. I gave you your master's wives. He's basically saying, I've given you everything. You didn't need to go looking out for another wife. Like I've provided you everything you need. Like you don't need more, but you went and took Bathsheba and killed Uriah to cover it, cover it up, right? So this one's weird and this one's challenging because it's God saying, I gave you your master's wives. So it's God saying here that polygamy is okay. It kind of sounds like it, um, but there is the sticking point of David never did take Saul's wives, so this isn't even but he also literal. Had Bathsheba and, uh, he did have multiple wives: Abigail, uh, Mishael. There was like at least four or five wives that David had. Interesting, but the the best explanations I heard on this is because David did actually not take. Um, any of uh, of Saul's wives that it wasn't a literal thing he didn't actually take those wives so it was a figure of speech that God gave him everything he needed where is this this one this article this article talked about it okay this picture gets even dicier when one considers the practice of kings of Israel King David the man after God's own heart had eight wives God only need, not only seemed to permit this activity one instant least, he actually took responsibility for it. In 2 Samuel 12, when the prophet Nathan confronts David over his sin, we read, This is what the Lord of God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel, delivered you from the hand of Saul, given you your master's house and your master's wives. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, and this was enough for you. I would have given you more. David's son Solomon, however, went overboard, flouting a stipulation in Deuteronomy 17. And we're going to get to that one next. Um, well, how do you respond to this? Um, yes, it is, it is a challenge. But I think it's interesting that that was actually not a reality. So it's not actually what happened. It was a figure of speech that God had given David everything he needed. Um, who wants De Deuteronomy 17, 17. This is helpful as speaking about the kings. Maya. And he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he acquire... For himself excessive silver and gold. So this is a laws about the kings and how they should conduct themselves. And this is a law that they should not acquire many wives. Okay? So David God said, like, if you want a king, fine, it's gonna ruin your life, it's gonna take your, your daughters. This this was a rule for the kings that they didn't really follow. Solomon certainly didn't, that they shouldn't take many wives. There was a, a rule in Deuteronomy that um, they they shouldn't take, the leaders shouldn't take more for themselves. And so David, I would say, Solomon, absolutely, were breaking this rule by having many wives. So we have a verse saying they shouldn't be doing this. Um, 1 Timothy 3.2, that's our only New Testament verse. That was me. Yes. 1 Timothy 3.2, when talking about overseers, elders, and deacons, it says, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. So, a New Testament requirement to be an elder or an overseer in the church is? One wife. One wife. Okay? So, this is 
put all this together, okay? We've got kings and people with multiple wives in the Old Testament. We got verses that say, take care of your first wife if you take a second wife. We've got verses that say, don't take too many wives. We've got verses that say, David, I gave you many wives. We've got verses um, where a, a priest gave a king multiple wives. So, and we got a verse in the New Testament that said, you can't be an overseer or an elder if you have more than one wife. So from a big biblical perspective, does the Bible approve of polygamy? Nope. What else? Who thinks it who thinks it approves of polygamy? Who thinks it does not approve of polygamy? I think it really who thinks it allows for polygamy in, in some in probably like Old Testament times more than New Testament Could times? I think, yeah, maybe at the beginning they didn't know. What was God's design for marriage? One man, one woman. Like, did, did he make Adam multiple wives? So this, here's where I leave it. Um, no, the Bible does not approve of polygamy, but it allowed for it in the New Testament. There were laws that understood that it was going to be a reality, and it was allowed for it, but not approved it. God's original design and New Testament command is for one man and one woman. Having multiple spouses leads to trouble. So this is an interesting one because it, it was a reality for many people in the Old Testament. And the Bible has laws around it trying to make it as good as possible. But the Bible never recommends it. And the Bible... Um, never shows it as a positive thing. It's always a negative situation. It always causes strife and division and trouble. So the Bible does not approve of it. And the, and the, Old, and the New Testament even returns to God's original design of a man and a woman and affirms that requirement. So what do you do when a friend comes to you and you say, well, the Bible says marriage is between a man and a woman. And then they say, well, what about polygamy? King David had a bunch of wives. King Solomon had 900. What do you say? 900? 600 wives, 300 concubines. You say they were disobeying God. That wasn't right. But it kind of seems like, well, David was a man after God's own heart, and he had multiple wives. He was also a man after women's hearts. <laughs> yes. So this is one of those things that's a challenge, because in the Bible, it's in, in there a lot. But who is perfect in the Bible? Jesus. Only Jesus. So yeah, just because, and just not any wives. So um, just because it's in the Bible, just because the Bible has laws around it and, and trying to make it make the best of that weird situation, doesn't mean the Bible affirms it or encourages it or says it's even okay. Yes. So in, in Matthew 19, when Jesus is questioned about divorce and why Moses allowed the church yeah, to Yeah, we talked about this verse last week. He has these three verses. Well, Jesus is, is almost more pro-singleness um, than anything. He says, not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it's been given. For some are eunuchs because they were born that way. Others were made this way by men, and others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. So, I mean, Jesus is even like, you guys, are, we're not about marriage. We're about the kingdom of heaven. Like, that's what life is about. Mm -hmm. And and I would connect this to when when they was asking about divorce. He says, Jesus says, it was because of the hard, hardness of your heart that Moses allowed for right. divorce. But it was not this and way so from the beginning. This is, this is not this way from the beginning. How was it from the beginning? One man, one woman, marriage. Right? So this is another thing, like the culture of the day had taken over and it had infiltrated the Israel culture and so that it was somewhat commonplace. It was never the ideal. But so that there were about right now and like um, homosexual and trans like stuff like that, if it was like you could also people could turn that what you're exactly saying right now, but to that it was not meant to say but the culture's like this. People could turn it to exactly what you're saying. That's right a good now. question. So they would say the church should allow for homosexual relationships that, because, because it's the culture. This way, mm -hmm. But the culture They could. It, but it's still not meant to be that way, and it's never... I know, but that's like we live with Jesus. We're not the Israelites 
like wandering in the desert. Like we we are have. called to even higher. The new covenant is a higher standard than the Old Testament in a lot of ways. You know, like it's it's that and more, right? Um, and we're dealing with more help from God and the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's also illegal, which helps, but, you know, that's a good question that, you know, some of the things of culture today, and those things, honestly, those things, Ellie, are absolutely trying to infiltrate the church. And there are churches that are allowing for that. And I don't, I and, believe it's surprising that we even have a law against polygamy because we have, we live in a world that allows so much sexualization and any type of sex relationship you can think of. Think about, oh, we're talking about homosexuality and gender identities and, and whatever, you know, I can go a long way. The fact that we're actually in our country still saying it's only between two people is actually surprising. And what do you guys think? Do you think this will continue to be illegal in your lifetime or will this law go away? Because there's lots of different laws. You know, like, I, I feel like maybe in the future, because our yeah, I think, you know, we're accepting more and more and, you know, whatever you feel like, whatever you want there. I, I have read, I've read some articles about like multiple relationships and they're not married, but you know, th there was three people and they're like, we're in a, we're in one relationship, like three people. And you know, like this is, I, I, I think in your lifetime, you will see the law against polygamy removed from America. Just like the law. On the law against homosexuality was removed in, in our lifetime. I think that law will be gone too. It's interesting. Okay. Thank you guys. This was a weird one. I was talking to Priscilla about this and she's like, I don't know how you're going to talk about this. This one's crazy. Why can't I? It's actually really interesting because I was talking to you. Like, I was like talking to you. Thanks, everybody. Like,